We are back, Science Family, part two of the solubility chart intro video. We went over one or two already in the previous video. So let's start with number three. Coming up, we have aluminum nitrate. So if you look, aluminum has a three plus charge, and that's right there. It says so, right? And nitrate, if you look over here, nitrate has a minus one. So NO3 with a negative one charge. All right, so when we put that together, that compound formula is going to be Al, one aluminum, and of course you're going to need three nitrates to fit in with that, right? Why? Because aluminum's plus three, so you need three negative nitrates in order to balance that out. So it would be Al, NO3, parentheses three. Now the question is, would this compound, when it was created in a double replacement reaction, be aqueous, solid, or not exist? So let's take a look. Aluminum's over here, nitrate's over here, and it ends up with an S. Now remember, S on this chart doesn't mean solid. It means soluble, which means it's aqueous. So aluminum nitrate in this case would be AQ for aqueous. So that's how we use our chart. Looking at our next problem, number four, you have sodium sulfate. When I look for sodium, sodium is Na with a plus one charge, and sulfate is right over here. It is SO4, and overall that has a two minus charge. So when we write that compound, you're going to need two sodiums at plus one each to cancel out with the negative two sulfate. So it would be NO, Na2SO4. Now let's check if it's going to be aqueous or solid or whatever. So here's sodium. And here is sulfate. So where they meet is a capital S. Capital S stands for soluble, which means that this in solution is going to be aqueous. What does that mean? That means that it will stay dissolved in the water. You won't be able to see it. It won't be like a solid that's coming out of solution. All right, that was sodium sulfate. Next is silver hydroxide. Silver is Ag+, plus, which means it has a 1 plus charge. And hydroxide right here is an OH with a negative 1 charge. So since it's plus 1 and negative 1, these two are just going to come together real easy 1 to 1. So AgOH becomes the compound. Now, is it solid, aqueous, or never exists? Let's see. Silver goes over this way. Hydroxide comes over this way. And lo and behold, there's an X. Remember, an X means that it doesn't exist. So even though we put that together in the formula, this really would never come together. So the ions would actually just continue to float around in the solution but it would never actually have them meet up and form a compound. So we use this solubility chart to figure that out. Number six was actually done on the previous homework help problem, so let's go to number seven, magnesium acetate. If you look at magnesium, magnesium forms a two plus charge, and acetate, which is a long bunch of letters in that C2, H3, O2, Overall, that huge thing only has a negative one charge. So that means you're going to need another whole acetate ion to balance out. So we write that, we're gonna do one magnesium because it has a two plus, and we're going to need two of these big acetates. So we're gonna put that in parentheses and drop a two on the outside to show that there's going to be a two. Now here's the question, magnesium and acetate, here's acetate, there's magnesium. It has an S. On the sheet, S does not stand for solid. It stands for soluble, which means that this would be aqueous. So even if this came together, it would be floating around in the water. It wouldn't be something you could see with your naked eye. If we look at number eight, potassium nitrate. Potassium has a plus one charge. And nitrate, which we've seen before already, is NO3 and that has a overall negative one charge. So if that's the case, plus one, minus one, it's going to be KNO3. 
three. All right, well, let's take a look where potassium and nitrate overlap. Pow, it is an S. Remember, S doesn't stand for solid. It stands for soluble, which means it dissolves in water, which means it is aqueous. So potassium nitrate is aqueous. Looking at number nine, lead two phosphate. So lead two right here, the two stands for a two plus, so that's why lead is called lead two. And if we do phosphate, which is a polyatomic ion, meaning a bunch of atoms put together with a charge, PO4 has a three minus charge. So if lead is two plus and phosphate's two, three minus, if we do two phosphates, that's gonna give us a total of negative six charge. So that means I'm going to need three leads, PB2 plus, to get two plus two plus two gives me six, and negative three and negative three gives me negative three, so they'll balance out positive six and negative six. So for this one, we're going to need three leads, PB3, and for phosphate, PO4, we don't mess with the four, on the outside, we put a two in the parentheses to show that there's two of those full phosphates and three of the leads. Now let's take a look at lead phosphate and see if this exists. What is, it comes up as an I on the solubility chart. Now, if I uncover this a little bit, the I on the solubility chart stands for insoluble, and it says it's a solid. So when these two mix together in the water, they would form a solid and fall out of solution. Kind of like the snow globe look. It would kind of be this powder that would fall towards the bottom of your beaker. So that's insoluble, meaning that it won't dissolve in water and it'll be out of water and you'll see it as a solid at the bottom, mixed up with liquid. Up next, number 10 is calcium bromide. Calcium forms a two plus charge and bromide has a negative one charge. So we're going to need two bromide ions to cancel out with the calcium two plus. So that's going to be CaBr2. Remember the two bromines to cancel out with the positive two plus calcium, right? Negative one and negative one added up is negative two and negative two and plus two cancel out to zero. Let's take a look. Calcium bromide is an S. S on this chart stands for soluble, which means aqueous. So calcium bromide would meet up, form a compound at first, and then break apart and just be dissolved in the water, aqueous. Number 11 is barium chromate. Barium, according to the chart, is a positive two charge. And chromate looks like it is a polyatomic, CrO4, and its charge is a two minus. So plus two and minus two, those cancel out. So you only need one of each. So that's BaCrO4. Remember that Cr, that four and CrO4 is part of that polyatomic ion. That doesn't mean there's like four of them. We're only using one of them. That's why I threw the parentheses to remind you that that's a whole polyatomic ion. So let's look at barium and chromate coming together. It falls under the letter I. I stands for insoluble, which means what? That if you mix this in liquid, it would not dissolve in the liquid. It would be a solid, probably fall to the bottom of the beaker, and you would see it and look almost like a powder. So barium chromate is insoluble, a solid. Coming up with zinc sulfide next. Zinc has a two plus charge. And if you look at sulfide all the way at the end, sulfide has a two minus charge. So that means it's going to be ZNS because a plus two and a minus two cancel out. If we take a look at those two where they overlap on the solubility chart. We see that it becomes an I. I stands for insoluble, which means that it is a solid. All right, so again, that would not stay dissolved in the liquid. It would actually come out of the water solution, be insoluble and form a solid that would probably fall to the bottom of the beaker. Coming up next is ammonium nitrate. Ammonium is a cation, but it's a polyatomic. We don't often have those, but NH4 has a plus one charge. That's not an H, that's a plus one charge. And ammonium is going to be with nitrate. Nitrate, NO3, is a polyatomic with a negative one charge. So remember, negative one and positive one cancel out. So that looks like 
our ammonium nitrate is going to be NH4, NO3, just one of each. All right, let's take a look if these guys are soluble or insoluble or what. So ammonium and nitrate together make an S. S on the chart stands for soluble, which means that it is aqueous. So ammonium nitrate, aqueous. Getting towards the bottom here, we've got iron three chloride. So iron three has a charge of three plus, that's why it has the Roman numeral. And chloride on this sheet, Cl minus, means it's a one minus charge. So that means we're going to need three of these chloride ions, negative one, negative two, negative three, to balance out with this positive three. So iron three chloride ends up becoming FeCl3 to say that there's going to be three chlorines. Now, if I take a look on my chart, chloride and iron overlap with S. S on the chart stands for soluble, which means aqueous. So this iron three chloride, if it was mixed in water, you wouldn't be able to see it. It would be dissolved still. So FeCl3 is aqueous. And last but certainly not least, number 15, copper to nitrate. Here's copper two. It has a two plus charge, nitrate. NO3 has a negative one charge, so that means you're going to need two of those nitrates, right, to cancel out. Negative one, negative two cancels out with positive two. So for every one copper, you're going to need two nitrates. So to do that, you put the nitrate in parentheses and put a two on the outside. Now let's take a look. Where copper and nitrate overlap is an S. S stands for soluble, which means that this would be aqueous, meaning that copper to nitrate would dissolve in the liquid and not show to the naked eye. All right, so science fam, this is using a solubility chart. When we do double replacements, you're going to have different ions mixing together, and we're going to need to know if that is going to be soluble, meaning that afterwards we're going to write AQ in the balanced equation, or if it turns up as an I insoluble, we'll have to say that it's a solid uh, in the equation. So keep that up. Nice job. Feel free to reach out and ask any questions you have.